Take a break from your busy schedule and join Harold Sala for Guidelines, a five-minute commentary on living. Suppose you are a young man whose best friend has a sister whom you have heard about but you've never met. Your friend describes her as having jet black hair, lovely dark eyes, she's outgoing, vivacious, has a great personality, and a fun-loving disposition. The more you hear about her, the more interested you become. Week after week, he tells you about her, and you find yourself wanting to meet her. So you say, how about introducing me to her? He replies, I don't think you believe she really exists. You reply, that's dumb. Of course I believe she exists. Remember, you even showed me her picture. Now, should that happen, you would begin to wonder about your friend's sanity, right? Now apply the same logic to the individual who denies the existence of God. For a long, long time, men and women have talked about God. They have described their interaction with Him. Then when Jesus was born, He told us that He was the image of the Father. Anyone who has seen me, said Jesus, has seen the Father. Yet in spite of this, some refuse to acknowledge He even exists. Frederick Nietzsche was one of them. At the close of the last century, he declared that God was dead, not much different from declaring that he had never existed. In simple terms, he put God entirely out of human existence and life. And how satisfying was this position? Well, Nietzsche lived out his last days in a mental institution, if that answers your question. Yet there is something which baffles me. I once visited the actual village where Friedrich Nietzsche lived and worked during the very time he came to the conclusion there is no active personal God. The village is located in the Alps, on a beautiful lake. I walked on the very path around the lake where Nietzsche had walked. I saw exactly what he saw. The autumn leaves were gorgeous. The snow-clad mountain peaks surrounding the village were breathtaking. I saw them. Nietzsche did not. When people refuse to see the evidence, a blindness sets in which numbs the mind and heart as well as dims the eyes. Francis Schaeffer wrote of Nietzsche, I am convinced that when Nietzsche came to Switzerland and went insane, it was not because of venereal disease, though he did have this disease. Rather, it was because he understood that insanity was the only philosophic answer if the infinite personal God does not exist. Let's face it. Everyone who pushes God out of his existence doesn't end up bereft of his senses, but he or she does end up separated from God, just as was Nietzsche, and without the hope of life after death. The fundamental axiom of existence is God, something which science or philosophy or psychology fails to recognize. The fact is, the carnal or fleshly man is at war with God. But denying God, either philosophically or practically, leaves nothing that really satisfies. Today, there are large numbers of men and women who intellectually acknowledge God's existence, but they live as practical atheists. Their hearts are in rebellion. Their actions deny the truth of what they assert. Mommy, why don't we go to church like my friend does? A little girl asked her mother. Well, dear, replied the mother, we don't believe in God. There was a pause, and the little girl asked a second question. Mommy, does God know we don't believe in Him? You want some answers firsthand, friend? Don't take someone else's word for it. Go to God's Word, the source itself. You've just heard Dr. Harold Sala with Guidelines, a five-minute commentary on living. If you would like to listen to the program again, download a copy, subscribe to our e-commentary, or view other resources, visit guidelines.org. We would like to hear from you, too. You can email us at info at guidelines.org. That's info at guidelines.org. Thanks for listening, and we invite you to join us again for the next edition of Guidelines.